Are you guys ready for a lightning round with Carrie and Cross? Let's do oh. this. Question number one. I, I, I feel you're like I like how you're like a little bit nervous. You're like, what is she gonna ask? <laughs> Question number one. Favorite movie of all time. Best of the best. Question number two. The best snack or meal to have on a cheat day. Ice cream. Oh yeah. What flavor? What's your go-to? Oh, uh, probably chocolate peanut butter. Nice. Question number three. The first and last concert you ever attended. A perfect circle in Paris with Scarlet. Um, it was at the last one? Uh, yeah, that was the very last one. It was uh, maybe about a year and a half ago. We were in, we were in France. And we, awesome. We saw a lot with uh, Chelsea Wolf, actually. Wonderful. What, what was your first concert ever? Oh, first one ever was Amana Marth, which is a Viking heavy metal band in Toronto back in, oh man, I don't know, maybe I was 14 or 15 years old. <laughs> Question number four, name your top three favorite bands of all time. Okay, A Perfect Circle, uh, Danzig, and probably Metallica. Nice. Question number five, Fa uh, wrestler you were most starstruck by. <laughs> I'm gonna say Ric Flair. And I will tell you, I, I was a bodyguard for a very long time and I was working around celebrities in the nightclub industry many moons ago before I had anything to do with wrestling. I was around celebrities all the time. I was around professional athletes all the time. I grew up with a boxing, wrestling, family culture. We were in the gyms. I never got starstruck by anybody. Something about, I was 16 years old. I met him in New York. He was at an autograph signing. Something about making eye contact with Ric Flair and it was totally unexpected. I was like, oh, I'm going to meet Ric Flair. I ran up. Boom, we hit like this and I just, I froze. And I was like, starstruck is real. I was it really like, oh my is. God, I couldn't even talk. I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> I, to stay. I couldn't believe it. And he just looked at me like he's seen this a million times. He's like, how you doing good? Like, oh. oh my God. And it's kind of embarrassing though, right? Like when you get starstruck, cause you're like, I never knew that I could be like this, you know? Yes, it was very funny. That's so awesome. Question number six, what is your favorite city to wrestle in? Oh man. Well, uh, it, I have to structure it like this. In the United States, uh, it's, it's, definitely, uh, it's definitely Florida. I mean, I, I, would, I would probably say Orlando right now. You know, pr uh, prior, 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 to, prior to the last two years, it used to be Los Angeles, um, but it's Orlando right now. And then second to that, I'll say in Mexico, uh, Mexico City. And uh, in Canada, I would say, uh, I would say Toronto. And uh, I bet Japan. that they're all different from each other, right? Like Toronto, Mexico, the US, all of them. Yes, completely different crowds, different reactions. Japan would definitely be Tokyo. And then uh, India, I would say New Delhi. Incredible. I love the fact that you can like pinpoint like so many different cities like around the world of like just places that you've been to places that you've been able to experience the different types of fandoms um, from wrestling fans. So here we go. Uh, question number seven. What is your favorite way to spend a day off? This is going to sound <laughs> this is going to sound really boring to most people, but honestly, I am a very routine person. I'm very militant. I, I like I like healthy routines. I like to get up in the morning and I like to exercise and train in the sun, um, just peace and quiet um, and just just have a very slow day. I like to have very slow days where I'm not rushed. Um, I really enjoy training. <laughs> it's all I do, but I really enjoy it. So if I'm able to do that without, you know, having to run errands and, and, and be all over the place and do certain things, just having a nice slow day out in the sun is a perfect day for me. I don't need much. I'm a minimalist. I love that. I love that. Question number eight. Uh, who made who made the first move? You or Scarlett? Oh man, I <clears throat> I guess <laughs> I guess you could say she did. <laughs> she did? Oh, I was I thought this question was gonna be predictable. It's like he's gonna say him. Oh, okay, but it was Scarlett. May I ask I'll how? Yeah, yeah, I'll give you something good. So <clears throat> when when her and I met. Uh, there was a there was a spark and there was a connection, and um, anyone who's ever had that experience knows what I'm talking about. It's like there's just a thing in the room when you know two people gravitate towards each other, and we were both terrified of it. <laughs> so we tried to stay away from each other for like a long time. Actually, it was kind of like 
her and I were so attracted to each other that it was actually intimidating to the both of us. So we tried to actually stay away from each other for a while. Um, oh, I got so, chills from that. <laughs> it's yeah. like a movie. <laughs> and so, you know, I guess uh, just one time out of many, we were just hanging out and, uh, and yeah, she, she made a move. So she's like, I couldn't handle it anymore. I had to do it. The anticipation of like, obviously there was this energy between you guys that, you know, you could, you could cut with the, with the, what are they, the other side saying you could cut the, you can cut the, in the intensity in the room or something like that. Yeah. yeah I yeah. love that. That's awesome. Question number nine, what's the craziest thing you've ever done? <clears throat> for me, for me, this is crazy. So I've always been terrified of um, deep open water. So I can swim in a pool. I can, I can, in like a controlled environment, I got no problem. I, I don't need to see the bottom. But when you're talking about an ocean that's, you know, 800 to 1,000 feet deep and it's wide open and anything can be in it, or even a lake that I'm unfamiliar with and I can't see where I'm going or swimming, I don't like that. I grew up with Jaws. It's staying with me forever. Um, so I recently I went on a trip to Tulum and uh, it was actually after the injury and I was rehabbing and I was just in a place mentally, psychologically where I, I was bothered at being aware of my limitations. And I don't like discovering that I have limitations because I, then I don't want them to be limitations anymore. So she was with me. Uh, two friends of ours were with me and I decided to go uh, snorkeling in the Gulf of Mexico and it was terrifying, but I'm glad I did it. It was awesome. I, the moment I jumped off the boat, I mean, it was like the worst riptide too, which I, I don't recommend anyone swimming in, but I didn't know the difference. I'd never gone snorkeling. They didn't want to scare me, so they didn't say anything. So I'm swimming through a riptide in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico and the water's like ripping me around and I just recovered from this and I felt good, but like you know, at that time, that's actually when I knew I was going to be able to go back to the ring because I was able to swim through that and I had no pain, no injury, nothing. Um, but going out into the into the middle of the ocean, I think was the craziest thing that personally I've ever done. Um, when you think about all the things that could go wrong, it was pretty crazy. And it was one of the most enlightening uh, spiritual experiences I think I've ever had to be able to engage with another world um, and, and just be a visitor there and to just be able to leave. Everything was great. Like it was awesome. Seriously, power to you, because when it comes to the ocean, the ocean always wins. So I definitely get that fear. But you know what? It seems to me like you conquered it. So last question, question number 10, name one item that is still on your bucket list. The NXT title. Perfect. And that rounds us up. Karen Cross, thank you so much for doing this interview with me. I was very excited to talk to you. Thank you guys so much for watching my interview with Karen Cross. Cross will be challenging for the NXT Championship against Finn Balor on night two of NXT TakeOver Stand and Deliver, which is taking place both on April 7th and April 8th. In the United States, you can watch on the Peacock. Everywhere outside of the United States, you can watch on the WWE Network. Until next time, I'm Denise Salcedo, and I'll see you guys later. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.